You're listening to Tabletop Arcanum, a podcast dedicated to learning and exploring the hobby of tabletop gaming. Your hosts are Justin Taylor and Richard Geese, so sit back and relax as we talk, discuss, and joke our way through the hobby we love so much. So many pieces of cloth and patches laying around. Time to make a beautiful christmas theme quilt out of them. This requires significant effort and time through and a steady supply of buttons. The player who picks the best patches and combines them most skillfully into a patchwork quilt wins the game. Welcome to Tabletop Arcane. This is Justin. And Mindy. And I suppose some season's greetings are in order for this episode? Yes. Happy, Happy holidays. holidays. Merry Christmas. Hanukkah. Kwanzaa. The Yule. Snow. I don't know. <laughs> Happy snow. Maybe snow. <laughs> Depending on where you are, right? Yes. For this special episode, uh, we wanted to do... There's got to be like a holiday or Christmas game, and then just in our laps drops Patchwork Christmas Edition. Yes. And it's like, oh, well, that's perfect for us to review in a quarantine-style holiday season where people really aren't going outside or typically celebrating. So here we are with a two-player Christmas-themed game that you can enjoy during the season. Awkwardly, though... This is going to release on the holiday, so it's not like you can, like, oh, that's a great gift idea, unless you're really late at giving games, so. It's true. Maybe. Maybe a belated Christmas. Or or next year. By now. Yeah. Save for next year. (laughs) So this is Patchwork Christmas Edition. Uh, It's designed by Yui Rosenberg. It is put out by Lookout Games. It is a two-player game. Plays in about 30 minutes. Ages 8 up recommended. And MSRP is $29.99. Now, if you have patchwork just regular patchwork it is the same game this is just a reskinned version of it with a little bit more holiday flair christmas present looking things also comes with a free cookie cutter so that might be your selling point (laughs) but does not change any of the gameplay or anything like that so you already have patchwork this is just a reskin of that yes now if you don't have patchwork at all maybe you want to pick up the christmas edition so let's talk about that first first impressions mindy why don't you give me my first your first impressions of Patchwork Christmas Edition. I actually really liked it. It um, It's just very colorful and very, very Christmassy. Um, and I am a very much a Christmas person, so I really do love the holiday. So I very much enjoy that. And I really, I thought it was really good overall. I think the colors, they and they go nicely together. All the different colors, all the different patchworks. And I think the size of it is really nice too. It's not too big of a game. So I think that's all really great, and I love the Christmas. So, how about for you? Uh, so my first impressions is this: this is a kind of become like a classic intro tile laying game. So I was excited to actually get the final, finally a chance to play Patchwork. It's my first time with Patchwork, uh, so I'm looking at this as holistically my review of Patchwork as well as the Christmas edition. Obviously, the cookie cutter is kind of one of those cute. Cute things that just can kind of toss in the box. This the reskin is relatively fine. I don't think I'm gonna feel too awkward about playing this outside of the holiday season with the plenty of games to play. Maybe it's okay to have this only come out seasonally. But ultimately, there's nothing that is stopping you from playing this outside of Christmas or the holiday uh, season. Mindy, like Mindy said, there is lots of colors, lots of different patterns and texture sort of things. My first impressions is, oh, it's a Yui game, so there's lots of tiles. And that's right, there's lots of tiles and lots of buttons, which is your currency. Ultimately, it's a tiny box. It can be, it barely takes up the box that it takes in. The player boards and the score and the time tracker are the size of the box. Other than that, everything packs really well. So this is something that could go traveling with you pretty easily. So those are kind of my first impressions of it, and it's a two-player game, so you know we got to play it with just us, and that's the only real experience you're going to have with it. So what does Patchwork do well for you? It does well the actual tile lane and the actual patchwork portion of it, because I am I'm not a I'm not a quilt person. I don't do quilts, but I do do um, you know different types of fabric sewing all that kind of stuff so I think it does really well with that and I definitely I think it does well with the pieces just the unusual shapes of them feels a little tetrisy 
<laughs> to me, which I really kind of like. Um, so I think it does really well with that. I think it does really well with the mechanic of the time portion of it and how you move around and get your time and you get your pieces. Um, I think it flows really well for that. And I think it flows really well with two people being able to go back and forth or like going as many times as you need to to get to the point where you can switch off turns. So I think that all works really well in this this one. I'm up for you. Yui Rosenberg is known for tile laying games and, and like that's one of his primary main mechanics and that's at its very core that's all this is and without all the extra stuff that some of his uh, bigger games hold on to and I think it does it very well. It, it keeps the mechanics simple. You're, it's a very good entry level tile laying game. So if you're looking at that mechanic going oh let me see Patrick's gonna be one of those like that's probably should be one of your first tile laying games that you play. Right. Because it doesn't overcomplicate anything else. The rules are very straightforward, very simple, and I really, really like it for that. You know, you either advance your time token because you can't afford the uh, the three pieces available to you, or maybe you choose to do that. Uh, in our plays, we never really chose that. No. Because we, it was more if we just couldn't afford them. Or you pick one of those pieces and you start building your, your patchwork quilt on your, your game board, which is then those Tetris-shaped pieces, so you have to kind of do some spatial, like, okay... Leave space for some pieces. You have to think ahead a little bit, but you don't know exactly what you're going to have to put there. So you have to keep very flexible mind. Uh, it does take a little good. Uh, it does a good job with the, that puzzle aspect, right? I really like it for that because your your the whole goal is to fill the most spaces as humanly possible. And you got really close to filling the entire board once. Got close, very close. Which yeah is impressive. It's an impressive yes. So things like that keep me interested in this game throughout the entire game. It's also not very long, which is also really a good part of it, too, because it's two players. Another thing that I think it does well, in the games we played, there was no feel-bad drafting moment of, like, I'm going to steal this piece out from in front of you. The only time we ever really came across that was when, on, on the time track a little bit, yeah. of, like, trying, because there's a special one one tile space pieces. Yeah. That whoever gets there first gets there. So there's a little bit of that in the timing, but ultimately there isn't really that, haha, take that moments. No. Which I enjoy. And in a two player game, you really, you know, there's plenty of card games, there's plenty of other like head to head aggressive games that do that, where this feels more Euro, where I'm trying to do the best thing with the pieces (laughs) available to me, and you're doing the same thing. We're just going to see how this plays out. Right, exactly. So what does Patchwork not do well? What 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 are, what are the opportunities in this game? I don't know if I'd call it a not well part, but just when you start off, sometimes like you just don't have enough buttons, which is your currency, to buy the pieces that you want to buy. I don't know. I also struggle with like there's like three pieces in front of me, and I want to buy them all, but I can't because I will advance too much or like just the order, and sometimes. I know, like, the one piece gave me trouble because I thought it was only so far deep and it was actually deeper than it was. So I think that would have helped if I knew, like, exactly how many patches it took up. Um, Mm -hmm. I think that's my, that's the biggest one. Like, the money is so much, you kind of, you know, you got to start off low and work your way up, which is hard, especially if you start off with, like, the large pieces to start with, (laughs) the large money button pieces. But I think the the knowing how many actual spaces something takes can be a little difficult because there's a lot going on on that piece as well. And there's no like direct line of like, oh, this is a square. I think that's my biggest thing that it probably could do better. My biggest, I guess my biggest complaint overall, and it, it's not, not really anything wrong with the game itself, and you kind of hit it a little bit. Because the tiles are randomized, order of what which ones you're going to have available to you early on in that first turn or two those first couple turns you may come across like everything costs like seven eight nine ten buttons and you only start with five so those those first turns of like well i'm just gonna get money right doesn't feel useful (laughs) in one of our games i was i kind of felt a little behind because i had to take a couple income turns early where you only I think you only took one when I took two or three right 
and your board was filling up faster than my board, which then got you to get to the 7x7 seven seven bonus tile faster than I did, got you right. to fill spaces. Like, it was just one of those things I felt behind the curve most of that game, just because of those what was presented in front of me at the beginning, randomly. Which is kind of what I felt with, with the other game, where I wasn't quite as far, and it was like mm-hmm. trying to catch up to you, and, and a lot of it was the buttons and the money. <laughs> so. It's not a terrible complaint, it's just, if I had to find something to, like, I wish there was a different way of doing it, but ultimately, if that's my biggest complaint about the game, it's not really much. Right. I've said a couple times, I don't feel there's a perfect game out there, but Patchwork comes close to this nice, clean... There's not much wrong with it no. for what it does. Yeah. My, I, guess, I guess that falls into my second like, opportunity. It's just a tile-laying game. It's right. a basic tile-laying game. That if, if you want more meat in your game, it's not here. But that's not a bad thing all the time. Right. If all of you E. Rosenberg's games were like this, he's going to need to come up with something more. But what he does well is tile-laying, and he has a lot of iterations where this is a little bit more on the simple side an entry level or, or or gateway game. And if you like that, follow Yui Rosenberg's other games because he has other games that take this and just crank it to eleven. Right. Overall, Patrick Christmas edition, MSRP is twenty nine ninety nine. Where do you think that falls? I think it's a little high. Not by much. I would say somewhere in the twenty to twenty five range for it. It's that cookie cutter, isn't it? <laughs> well, I mean the cookie cutter doesn't do it for me. I'm sorry. I don't know. I like cookie cutters, but I don't know. <laughs> but also, I just, it is a basic tile laying game. You know, there's not a lot to it in that. So I think a little bit cheaper would have been nice. Overall, though, I mean, as a Christmas present, as something like that, I think it's great. I think price wise, I think a little bit cheaper would have been nice just because it is a little bit simpler. There's not a lot going on. What I think, how about you? I would have loved to see this game coming at $20. Mm, yeah. I think the value in the game is more like 25 ish uh-huh. You know, 25 to 30 But I would have loved to see this coming in at $20. Because of White Elephant or Secret right. Santa. Like, exactly. Get it at that where most people like at your the work. The 20 at your work, Yeah. We're at your work group. Yeah. Your work group is like, well, we'll put a cap at like 20 bucks for everybody. Right. Or something like something. that would have been an... No, I don't, it's been a long time where it's very rare that I see, like, a gifting circle mm-hmm. reach over 25 bucks. Right. You know, to that $30 mark. Now, if you find this on sale and you get it down to 25 you might be able to squeeze it in. But I think this would be a great grab bag sort of gift mm-hmm. yes. for a group specifically for that. And that's the only thing I would love to see this at $20 for that purpose alone. I think $25 is more ideal for what you get out of the game i think in general like I, it's just my personal feeling that i think two player games are usually a little bit more overpriced but i always look at games of like how many you know for two of us that's 15 dollars for each of us playing this right where if this was a four game player game now that 15 dollars is 750 per player for a single play right like i don't know i just look at it at that way is like where's where's that value yeah coming from now you we to... like this game, right. so we're going to play it. I'm going to get my $30 out of this game without right. question. As I say, yeah, for two players, you can play it more often and everything mm-hmm. like that. But it's yeah, short, I think... it's sweet, it's nice. Yeah, definitely for like grab bags or like Secret Santas or things like that, this would be an excellent gift for that if it was a little bit cheaper. If it was within that budget, yeah. yeah. Overall, $29.99 isn't ridiculously overpriced for it. I think we both agree if it was just a little bit less, like 20 to 25, it would have hit that sweet spot. Right. Who would you recommend this for? Well, one, anybody who likes tile laying games. Two, people who actually quilt. Mm. <laughs> I think they would very much appreciate it. Yep. You know, it's much easier than actually quilting. So <laughs> I and will faster. give it that. And faster, yes. <laughs> and anybody who's looking for like a simple, simple holiday game or bringing you know to your family and like maybe two of you are off you know you play this quickly as you know dinner's getting ready or something like that things of that sort what was it eight and older Mm -hmm. i definitely can see that i could see younger ones if especially if they live with people who do quilt 
and understand that mechanic of like how or, do we fit these together or game <laughs> or game yes yes but how do we fit these pieces together so if they understand that and i think a lot of like younger kids can understand that i think mm -hmm. maybe too young they'll just not just be distracted or whatever but i definitely i would recommend it for those people i definitely think if you if you have like a game night or something like that with like your family and you know you've got multiple two player games or something like that or like a quick one as you're waiting for people to show up i think this is a good one it's 30 minutes it's not very long at all so i think that's great uh who would you recommend this for um uh, pretty much all of the above that you already said if you are trying to get people into modern gaming this is another one I'm going to toss up on my solid... It's a two-player game, but it's a solid gateway game. Yes. This is going to get you into modern gaming that isn't your Monopoly and your Milton Brantley games. That, like, no, board games are more than just that now. I think that would be the only ad I would have. Um, the rest of the ones that you listed, Mindy, are, are, are spot on, too. Flipping the Coin, who I would not recommend this for. I would have a hard time recommending Patchwork for Families where you're going to have more than two players consistently. And that's just, it's hard for me to say, to, to do that. Um, I think there's other tile laying games that are out there that support more than two players, which keep the game mechanics simple enough. Dollars to Donuts, which we interviewed for a while back in a prior episode, I, it supports up to four players. I think that would be a... Right. I would recommend that over Patchwork. If you know two players is going to be hard to right. stay with it. And that's really the only thing I would caution on. Because I, even advanced gamers, I think, would have a good time with Patchwork. I don't think it's a game that you grow out of, per se. I'm, there are definitely game mechanics and, and gateway games that, like, you're great with this to start with. But eventually you're going to kind of graduate to the next tier. And I don't know... I'm, I don't know if I feel Patrick's falls into that, so I don't really want to say, like, if you're an advanced tile layer player, <laughs> um, you're going to find Patchwork simplifying. Like, you love tile laying games. You're going to love Patchwork. Right. It may be simpler than the other games, but that also means it's faster than the other games. Right. I wouldn't recommend it for anybody who's, like, looking for longer games or looking for something like that. Mm -hmm. um, it, like you said, it doesn't matter, like, if you're advanced or whatever, uh, a tile laying game. This is very simple. It's nice. And especially when you can do it with, you know, somebody else and you're trying to teach somebody. I mean, I read through the rules and I understood it. So it uh, makes it very simple. But I can definitely see, like, if you were plan on sitting down and having a big game night or something like that, you definitely wouldn't want to bring this out. But otherwise, I mean, definitely you can have it in your collection. I think it's good for everybody. People who are going to have more than four than two people playing constantly. So, you know, if you've got a couple older kids and, you know, they always want to play together and, like, they're friends and stuff like that, so probably not this game, but <laughs> but I could definitely see, like, if there's just two people in the house that want to play, this is a good game for that. So, yeah, there's not really a not great for anybody, <laughs> I think, almost, so... Overall, I was very impressed with Patchwork in general, and the Christmas edition is just that. If you have Patchwork, you don't need Patchwork Christmas edition. If you don't have Patchwork and you love Christmas, Mindy, yes, then get this one. Yes. But I definitely think this is a great game that should be a, a, a cornerstone in most co gaming collections. A staple piece, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, that does it for our review of Patchwork Christmas. This has been Justin. And Mindy. And you've been listening to Tabletop Arcam, so thank you for that. As always, tell your friends, tell your neighbors, tell your, your cousin, your dog, whatever. Just tell them uh, about Tabletop Arcanum if you wish. And you can always find us on the, the various social media. So we're on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. We're also on YouTube and uh, Twitch. So you can find us in all of those fun places. So from our, for our, our little home to your home, happy holidays, and thanks for listening. And happy gaming. Happy gaming. You've been listening to Tabletop Arcanum, hosted by Justin Taylor and Richard Geese, and featuring the original music by Paul Moore and Isaac Gilbert. You can follow us on most social media platforms. Please don't forget to like, subscribe, and leave us a review on whatever platform you listen to podcasts. As always, thanks for listening. Mm -hmm.